live with Airplay 21. Welcome to Airplay. I'm Connie Kettfinger, and we are just knocking off this season. We're almost at the end of June, which means we'll take July and August off, and we'll be back in September. So send us those plays and send us your headshots. And if you want to read with us, contact me on Facebook. Tonight, we have a new artist joining our team, Carrie, my lovely co-host. Yes, can you hi. Tell us about, can you tell us about the play, sure. the play in the players? Of course, Connie, I'd love to. So sure, Connie, I'd love to introduce the play, the playwright, and the players. Our play today is Accidental Death by Anne Marilyn Lucas. Anne Marilyn Lucas is a playwright, director, actress, singer, college professor. She's a member of the Directors Guild of America, Equity, SAG, and AFTRA. Anne's first full-length play, From Silence, The Journey of a Holocaust Survivor Finding Her Voice, was produced in NYC at the Theater for the New City in 2016 and various other venues, including the Museum of Jewish Heritage in NYC. Recovery, the struggle of three sets of mothers and their daughters with the disease of addiction was staged at Boston Playwrights Theater and produced in NYC at Theater for the New City. Say the Name was staged at Harvard University and used as text in the Divinity School. The nine commission musicals she's written have played to sold out crowds. Anne began acting as a child, trained in London, and did regional rep before working in NYC for 10 years as an equity actress. Anne lives in Marblehead, Massachusetts, and has two daughters. And I am happy to say I am the director of this play today. I am an actor, director, host, and singer. I was born, raised, and studied acting in New York City, and have appeared in countless film, television, and theater productions. It is always such a joy for me, co-hosting, directing, and acting on Airplay. And I would just like to take this opportunity to thank Connie and our wonderful producer, Rachel Love, for giving us a playground to create. I would also like to thank my talented cast for bringing these characters to life. And now it's time to introduce my talented cast. I've had the pleasure of directing and acting with these lovely ladies before. Mary Ellen Ashley will be playing Leah Langley today. She is an actress, singer, director, and producer of Broadway, television, and film. Mary Ellen has been recognized as a distinguished professional in her field through Women of Distinction magazine. Her resume includes many off-Broadway credits, and most recently, two film pilots, The Bunny Hole and Americanos. She's also spent many years in regional theater, including playing Dolly in Hello Dolly 11 times, and was in Music Man, Funny Girl, Cabaret, Best Little Whorehouse, 42nd Street, Fiddler, and Gypsy, just to name a few. Jackie Hume will be playing Officer Verna Johnson. Jackie is a Senegalese American actor, lawyer, and French English Spanish teacher. She also coaches mediation and negotiation. She thanks her family and friends for continuously listening to her acting screams and tears. Since the pandemic has started, she has produced, directed, and acted in a myriad of plays and monologues, which you can watch on our YouTube channel. You can find the link on our YouTube page. And now a little bit about our play today. Leah Langley, an elderly woman driving at night, has been arrested by the police in a poor neighborhood in Lynn, Massachusetts. As Officer Johnson questions her, we learn more about Leah Langley's story and what has brought her to this moment in time. And now, accidental death. Did the officer on scene read you your rights, ma'am, before he brought you in? I believe he did. He seems too young to be a police officer. But then everyone seems so young to me. You understand you have the right to have a lawyer present? Oh, yes. But I wouldn't want to wake up Everett. He, he and Marge go to bed early. You are consenting to questioning in a criminal investigation without an attorney present. You are Mrs. Leah Langley. You live at 
35 Chestnut Street, Salem, Massachusetts, 01970. I have lived there all my life and intend to until I die. I was born in that house in, well, a lady doesn't discuss her age officer. Ma'am, uh, you drive a white 1984 Lincoln Continental, Massachusetts license plate number 58270T3. Yes. Well, I can explain, officer. I know it's old, but it was just Hal's car. He loved it like a son. He never had a son. Just the one girl. <laughs> It never gets out much now that he's gone. I hardly ever drive it. I was afraid I might be uh, out a little later than usual. I felt I should take the big car for safety. It wasn't damaged, was it? Oh, oh I'll, be, I'll be in hot water for that. Ma'am, I believe it has only slight superficial damage to the bumper. About the accident... Mm. Yeah, I, oh, just a minute here. Mm. Oh, I hope I have it. Oh, I just, I just hate it when I lose things. Can I have your attention, ma'am? I need to question you about the accident. Oh, of course, but I can't seem to find my keys, my driver's license. Sally Ann will say I'm getting feeble-minded. Oh, I hate having all these cards. <laughs> Time was all you needed was a driver's license and a picture of your family, an insurance card, triple A card, and maybe a credit card for gas and groceries. <sighs> Later on. Later on, those things made sense. <laughs> Now you have to have a card for everything. Oh, can't clip a coupon to get sale items you need. No, you, you have to have another card. I know I gave my license to that nice young man who came to check on me from your station, but I can't seem to find it. Uh, if, I, if I don't, I'll be in real trouble. I have it here, ma'am, with your car keys. Oh, <laughs> see all, all, all those little cards, they, they have you stick on your key ring. It's, it's a miracle I can find the keys with all those dangling around. It's not enough to cram your wallet too full to close. Well, <laughs> I'm so glad you have it. <laughs> Now I won't have to worry about getting a new one. They're always trying to take away your license when you get older. In all the excitement, I wasn't sure what happened and what didn't. Yes, ma'am. Let's talk about that. Can you tell me what happened tonight? Well, of course, officer. I had come from visiting my friend down at the nursing home. Alice fell and broke her hip. She's there for rehab rehabilitation. It's a, it's a pretty nice place. People are really friendly, but she's, she's not gonna stay. Though her children want her to. Not how we treated our folks in my day. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be fair to look her up for falling, lock her up. It's, it's, it's wrong to put people away just just because they're older and need to take their time. It, it's no crime, is it? No, ma'am. Sorry to hear about your friend. Tell me about the accident. Yes. Well, it was getting quiet, dark, hard to see. I was driving the speed limit all the way, sometimes less. I never go over the limit, never have. Sometimes people get so impatient if you drive at the speed limit. Honking their horns if you don't blast away from a traffic light when it changes. <laughs> I drive carefully. Never had an accident. You won't tell my daughter, will you? I, 
I'm sure you are a careful driver, ma'am. Now, about tonight. Oh, um, you see, this would be just the excuse Sally Ann needs. She has wanted me in assisted living since she left and Hal passed away. She moved to Arizona after Susie died and the divorce. Mm -hmm, too many memories. I don't blame her. I, ju I just don't think I should be locked away because she has too much pain to stay. I'm just fine where I am. Well, ma'am, that's a problem for another day. Tonight, She we... doesn't want me driving alone in then and especially not after dark. There are so many rough and dangerous men on the streets, but I try to tell her they're not looking for old ladies like me. <laughs> I have to come down here because my friends have had to move. With all the crime in Lynn nowadays, it's scary for them. But rent is so much cheaper. Ma'am, we must focus on the accident. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, do you have a mother? I must ask you to answer my questions, ma'am, about the accident. Are you planning to lock her away? No, ma'am. She lives with us. The accident. Oh, that's a nice arrangement. You are a good daughter. Thank you. Now, can we get back to the accident? Oh, of course. Of course, ma'am. I am happy to help such a nice, polite young lady in any way I can. We can keep this between us, can't we? I'm sure you understand. I don't want to upset Sally Ann. I am responsible for my own choices. Think how upset you might be if your mother was in an accident. We'll see, ma'am. Please describe the accident. Yes. Yes, well, I was driving toward home on Essex Street. There are not enough street lights. It's so dark. It's a miracle. More people don't get killed, run into things. And Please, ma'am, I will note that in the record. Go on. So I am driving carefully along Essex Street when mm. suddenly, out of nowhere, this man in a black coat runs across the street right in front of my car. Not at the crosswalk or at the light. I tried to break, but a I- A witness at the scene said you sped up. Oh, I may have panicked and, and missed the break at first, <laughs> but I, my, my, my legs aren't really long enough for his car and the seat seems stuck so far back. I don't want to distress you further, but you should know the man you hit has died. He's dead? Oh, my God. Died in the ambulance. Ooh. I didn't think I hit him hard enough to kill him. I can't believe it. Ma'am, he was thrown some distance. Did he have alcohol or drugs in him? I did hit him a little, but that doesn't mean he couldn't have died from drugs. No, he died from being hit by your car and thrown... 20 feet through the air. Oh, for heaven's sakes. That sounds like a long way. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You hit him. Cars do terrible things to human bodies. Well, you should know this is your area of expertise. But you're sure he's dead? Mr. Olivares, he's dead? Absolutely. Killed by your car. Are you sure you don't want your lawyer, ma'am? My lawyer? Why would I need a lawyer? Because you killed a man? This is vehicular homicide we're talking about. Yes, I guess so, but he was jaywalking. I was driving carefully. He broke the law. You are going to need a lawyer. Well, this is very upsetting. I hope you won't call Sally Ann about this. She will have a fit if she finds out I was driving at night. A lawyer, ma'am. 
Do you have one? Everett did my husband's will. You'll need a criminal lawyer. Maybe your daughter could help. Could I get her number? Ma'am, you don't seem to understand the seriousness of what happened tonight. I don't know. Maybe Sally Ann will really be happy he's gone. The deceased? She might be fine with it. Maybe she'll move back, feel safer. Not lock me away from driving after dark. Ma'am, did you know the deceased? I did. It was a surprise to see him lying there in the street. I had wished him dead so many times. And now by accident, divine intervention. God works in mysterious ways. You knew Mr. Olivares? He killed my granddaughter. I see. This will complicate things. I don't know why he's dead. He won't sell heroin to anyone else, this child. He won't seduce and batter any other little girls. Your granddaughter was... Uh, Susie Bond, the sweetest, most trusted child in the world. Two, three years ago, I remember. I worked on her case, made the arrest. <laughs> Yes. I think you saw her in court. It's possible. It was hard for me to see him walk. Listen, Mrs. Langley, you don't want to say anything until a lawyer is present. You need to protect yourself, ma'am. Officer, do you have children? I do. Two girls. But... You can be grateful then they will never meet Mr. Olivares on the street or at their school. My granddaughter was not that lucky. Ma'am, I'm sorry for your loss, but... You... It's not just needless. Girls are dying now because they put heroin up there in their baby place. When they find them, they don't know it's an overdose. It's a nightmare. I just had to tell a 15-year-old's family she died that way. It's an epidemic, but please, don't do yourself any more damage. We should wait until you have a lawyer. These are not things you want to tell me. But I do, because I... I don't understand. You have right to counsel, to protection, I'm telling you. Tell me, tell me what I need to know then. <laughs> Officer Verna Johnson, tell me why. Why old people need to be locked away, but these immoral men, killers, who target the most vulnerable outside their schools, in playgrounds. Why are they free on our streets? Why aren't you protecting our children? Why don't you stop them? Why do I have to suffer the torment? And, oh. It is an unfortunate problem of our legal system that sometimes the guilty go free. But Mrs. Langley, Listen to me. You're in shock. You should wait for counsel. Give yourself time to think this all through. I have. It was a coincidence that has resulted in a wrong being put right. Oh, God works in mysterious ways. Honestly, ma'am, you don't want to be saying these things. You are incriminating yourself. Incriminate myself? Why? It was an accident, a lucky accident. If I had killed anyone else, I would feel horrible, terrible. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. But to Rick Olivares, I can't help thanking God 
for putting him in my path. End of play. Thanks for joining us. Join us next week on Airplay. <laughs>